First row, got this thing, it's off a gate or what. So today we've tried somewhere new, we've come to Derby, right in the middle, we're going to have a good few throws here, there's another bridge further down that was like 1700s, so we might a attempt to hit that one later, we'll see what happens. Just waiting for Kirsty and Michael, Rusty's not out today. And Mr. Preddy's not out today. So it's just the four of us. Two lots of couples. So I can't see many arguments. Oh, just pulled that out. Uh, not sure. Uh, on the bike. A bike. Get the scaffold clamp. What is that? Marie just had this big lump of crud. Uh, there's a washer there, look, and there's a clean. That could be a modern penny. We'll have a look. I think it is a modern penny, but we'll have a look anyway. Make sure. Uh, I'll get the hammer on this and check it all out. It was only just a penny, so yeah, we'll put all that in the scrap. Best to check. Always check your crud. There you go, so Marie's pulled some more crud up, and it just proves our point. Check your crud, because Marie's found a, a piece of crud, it's got a coin on it. Ooh. Oh, that's a frickin' bit. So that's a frickin' bit, that's 1930s. I'd say that coin then is probably 10s, 20s, 1910, 20s. That? I'll just try and cut, show you from around the bit behind you so I can. Uh... Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see there that coin? But underneath. That's a well, frickin' bit on the top. There's one there by your thumb as well. Is that one there? That could potentially be a coin as well, I don't know. Oh, look, coins! Isn't that wonderful? So, yeah, Glenn will clean them up. But, uh, what, did, what, yeah. what did you say that was? That's definitely a frippany beat because they've got um, an every tight sides. Right. After Glenn took these coins home and cleaned them up, this is what they turned out to be. One was a 1944 three pence coin, which is commonly known in the UK as the threepenny bit. And the other was a one penny from 1916. Proving, as Glenn always says, check your crud. Okay. 
big piece of a hook there. It's obviously been snapped in its time. That is one big hook. Uh, old boy crack, I think. This one, old boy crack. Her bucket handle. First row, guys. Stop holding. I am magnet fishing, guys, but my magnet's stuck over there, so I'm going to have to go and get it in a minute. Don't pull this. <laughs> offers, offers. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just pulled out a big metal butterfly, obviously magnetic, really nice, I like that. Uh, never had this like, pointy thing, it's hollow, chip it off with a hammer and see what it is. I think it's a rounded hat, a statue that is. Oh. Just coming down the steps because I heard you say you'd had something really nice. I've got an icon. Oh. You can't really see much further there, but it's a fleur de lis. I've started collecting a few of the fleur de lis now. It's been, been nice cleaned up. We've got an old padlock as well. Nice. That's it. Now I saw you with some kind of hanging thing. Oh. That. Shame oh. it wasn't whole. So what would that have been? An angry thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it would have tipped something out, look. Oh, yes. Oh. So I don't know. So me and Kirsty have come to the other side of the bridge. The guys are over that side. So I'm going to try here. But Kirsty just got stuck, but you know, Arnie. <laughs> <laughs> I got unstuck. <laughs> Yeah, so we shall smoke. Yeah. My Um, yeah. What do you think it was? A... You thought it was a fence. Was that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't think. Oh, I ain't with it today. We thought it was a fence stopper. But on closer inspection, it's actually an hammer. But look at the shape of that. I hope you can see that in this light because the light's awful today because it's. Uh, you know, all snow around and misty. So I hope you can see it okay, but look at that for a hammerhead. I love it. Right. Isn't it? It's some kind of a turn handle. Once Glenn had cleaned this item up, it turned out to be a coal hammer which would have had raised letters to either side, reading coal on one side and hammer on the other. No way! Oh, good. Wow! It's a machine! How many for you? I don't know, let's ask me. Beautiful eyes. Well, I've got that. I think it's off a, an old light. So, nice. But, but, look at that. We're not, I'm not sure. If it's a, a little youth knife, look, a 
let's see if I've got you. I've got it on properly for you. Let's have a look. But uh, let's see if I can get the light right. And it's in the sheath still. Oh, look at that. I'm over the moon. Oh, wow, that cleans up nice. So, yeah, check it out on the finds. Oh. The square item actually turns out to be an 1880s iron and brass coffee grinder, manufactured by Kenrick and Sons of West Bromwich, England. Founded by Archibald Kenrick in 1791, the company was a prominent British iron founder and manufacturer that played a significant role in the production of various cast iron products during the 18th and 19th centuries. They began business with the production of ironmongery and hardware including items such as door hinges, locks and other household fixtures. Over time, the company expanded its product range to include a wide variety of cast iron goods, from fire grates to cooking utensils, and this beautiful cast iron coffee mill was one of them. This coffee mill was made of cast iron due to its ability to withstand the grinding process, and these mills also typically featured a hand crank, that allowed users to manually grind the coffee beans to their desired coarseness. And you will see that just before I found this item, I also found a hand crank, which turned out to be part of the coffee grinder. Check out the finds roundup at the end of this video, where you will see this item all cleaned up. <laughs> For a second then. Oh no. What is it? I don't know, a handle or something? I nearly had my eye out. Yeah. Flange. Part of a shovel. Ray, pull that out. I think that's some sort of old industrial roller. I'll come and show you what Glenn's got because a bit unusual. Oh, that killed me. What is that? It's like a. Uh... Well, I was reading this original bridge was wood. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I'm right. thinking this is part of the original could, bridge. Could well be then, that could. Because that bridge was built in 1930 and it was turned into concrete, obviously, from a wooden bridge. So I'd say this is part of the original bridge. Good Derby history. The original bridge started life as a timber footbridge built by the Binghams of Exeter House in order to access their gardens on the other side of the River Derwent. Exeter House was eventually demolished because of cost and to allow improvements to the bridge to be made. So the old wooden Exeter Bridge was demolished in 1929 and replaced by this concrete bridge. I think Kirsty's got a drain cover. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> she has. Well done, Kirsty. How's Heather? There we go. Try and cover. Try and cover. Heavy stuff in this stretch. I know. I know. I
Oh, I'm laughing because we keep getting stuck in the rocks. And it's just like, ooh, <laughs> ooh, all the time. That old guy is from down there, me and Michael, and uh, there's some writing on that and around there. So we'll take that back and we'll clean that up and see what it is. So, guys, we just had this out. It looks like an old uh, street light cover, but it has got some painting on it. So I'm going to let that dry out and give it a careful scrape and hopefully we'll see what it's off. The second one today. I don't know what that is, I found one of these before. That is the bottom oh, yeah. of a Victorian toilet flusher. This would have got pulled up with a hook and then the water would have rushed out. Hello guys, sexual banter, sexual harassment is not banter, call it out, and then we have this interesting thing, it looks like a coin on the end of three pieces of chain, but then the other end looks like some sort of bright lever, and they're, they're both attached. They're meant to be. And a nice old pocket watch. That's got to be the smallest little ob nail that I've ever found. Look how small that is. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's an 18 pounder. Oh. Jesus Christ. Bloody beautiful. I found Steve. Yeah, it's a nice place to get the top in here. Oh, no. Right, so it's come to the end of the day, guys. It's been an heavy day in Derby. Oh. It's been really heavy. Thanks to Kirsty and Michael for taking the scrap. 
absolutely amazing of them. There's got to be half a ton there. Um, it's been a bat breaker. But we've had some nice bits, haven't we? Yeah, some nice ones. We've had some nice bits of this stuff. So, Michael's given me what he's found. I've got what I found, and we're going to take it back and clean it up. Yeah. And if it's gold, Michael, let's have it back. <laughs> that, bits of crud to check. Bits of crud to check as well. And yeah. um, as you've seen on the video, I've got some coins and some crud, so that'll be interesting to see what the other one is. I know the other one's a threatening bit, but I, I reckon 40s. With the coins. Oh, Kurt, now Kirsty saw a date of 1916 on it. Oh, right. Well, yeah. okay. Mm, One of okay. them's a, yeah, 1916. Oh. Mm. Right, so we're going to wrap this up, guys, and uh, big love, and we shall see you on the next video. See you later, guys. Enjoy the finds roundup. Bye. Bye. The finds roundup. Hello, you lovely people. Welcome to Peaky Dippers. We, um,. Had a lovely day out in Wimmeray. We did. At a certain bridge. Um, we're going to go back there again eventually. Um, but we had some nice little bits of... It was nice to find some bits of history. So I'm going to run through the bits with you. And we'll see what there is. There's one item I really could do with your help, guys. Because my imagination is playing away with me. And we don't know what it is, do Wimmeray? No, we don't. Right, so we'll run you through the. Can I, uh, can I just say something? something coffee. Go on. You look, you're looking rather dapper today, rather. You know, not that you, you're always handsome, but you're looking extra handsome today. Thank you, darling. <laughs> right, um, so it's my new jumper, guys. <laughs> <laughs> right, so uh, yeah, let's have a look at what we've got. And there's one mystery item, as I say. So, Marie pulled up a hammerhead. And you may say, well, what's different about that? I've never seen one like this until Marie put it up. And it was really the shape that made me think, what the hell is that for? Because hammers have got different uses, haven't they? Yeah. And when I cleaned it up, I knew what it was for. Because I don't know if you can make it out on the camera, but on there, it says coal. I did put it on the video, so. Mm hmm. It I'm says coal, that. and on the other side, it says hammer, but it is very worn. Um, so it's a coal hammer. I can't say I've ever seen one before. I haven't. No. So that was that. My dad has a giveaway, Marie. Oh, it could do. My dad has a giveaway. It's nothing I keep, but I don't want to throw it. So preserve the history. Somebody might want that. Somebody might be able to make it into a, a working hammer again. And restore it again, yeah. Yeah. My first throw that day. Was this a lovely big metal butterfly? Lovely. And I've still got to clean a lot of this stuff up, guys. I'm, I'm not behind at the moment. I've got a lot of things going on personally. But, yeah, a lovely, beautiful butterfly. So he can go in the garden, Marie. Oh, lovely. And I might even take the time to paint him up. <laughs> Michael found a, a lovely little pocket watch. Unfortunately, the face is missing. Um, we don't think it's anything that would have been expensive. It's probably uh, a wartime pocket watch. And I managed to clean it up, but I happen, I happen to own it as well. And sometimes inside pocket watches, guys, especially if you other magnificers out there, if you can get them open, sometimes you'll get names engraved in there um, from wartime stuff like that. This one, unfortunately, is playing. Can you see that, Marie? Yeah. This one's playing. So, um, yeah, I'm going to give this back to Michael the weekend because what I do is I show Michael's phones and Kirsty's and Steve's and then they get them back. So, yeah, nice little pocket watch. But it's still nice to hang up with um, with, with something wartime, eh? On a display. On a display. Yeah. So let's go back to Michael. We found... A brass washer that was stuck in a big piece of crud. We don't know. Found another washer that was stuck in crud. Got to bear in mind, guys, these little rubbish finds. Uh, when them sticking out the side of crud like that, you think it's a coin. So we always bring it back, and it just proves that we bring it back and check it. But we, because did, we did find some coins in that crud. We did, yeah. Um, 
in the video you'll see that there was a piece of crud with three discs in, one of them being that one. Yeah, it was. One of them being that one, and uh, uh, which I thought was three coins. But the two, when I got all the crud off, the one was a 1944 Fretley bit, three pence, and uh, a 1916 George Penner. So that was a nice find. And obviously, that was what pulled it up with the magnet. But saying that, I've still got to clean that properly. I mean, I think it's just a washer, but it has got a line going across it. So I will check that out further before I throw it. We've got the smallest hobnail boot iron. No, I did think that. But I've looked at this and I think that is off a child's shoe. Yeah. So that is tiny. So that, I would 99% say that's off a child's shoe. Yeah. Victorian era, around there, around that area. So, yeah, nice little hobnail boot shoe. Again, another giveaway. Hmm. We found another disc. I don't know what the hell it is, but it's a disc. Again, just checking my crud, guys, because you, you never know what things are. We've got uh, a little bookshot, which is just, uh, a bookshot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they're basically they're just uh, like little grape shots, basically. Marie had an awesome find. She found the bomb, as you'll see in the video, which was an 18 pound bomb. And people keep saying, why is it always 18 pound bombs? Because 18 pound bombs during World War II was the most commonly used size bomb. So when a Magnet Fisher pulls a bomb out, 99 times out of 100, it is an 18 pounder. I don't think I've ever seen anyone pull Anything out bigger than an 18 pounder in magnet fishing or small. Well, they've pulled some smaller bits out, but that's about it. But the 18 pounder guy is, is the most common bomb that I would have dropped uh, in this country. So that's the answer to that. Because I do keep getting asked that. Right, Maria found a lovely knife. Hmm. Um, and, and we thought, it, we was thinking at one point it could have been a Hitler Youth knife or something like that, who he was told. When I took when Shat I got it on the shape of the end, wasn't it? Mm, it's too far gone. I think there's your leather pouch it was in, and there's the knife, and I think it was probably more of a scout's knife. Mm. Old, don't get me wrong, but it's too far gone. It's it's a shame really, but never yeah, mind. Never mind. Then we had, you had this, didn't you, Mary, I think? No, uh, you did. Oh, I did. Mm -hmm. We had a thing stopper. Now, people joke about thing stoppers, but I have started collecting them because I've got a project I'm going to do in the back garden where these are going to get used. They, are lovely. Up. they are lovely, though. They're they are. All nice, aren't they? What? This day and age gets <laughs> all that detail and workmanship put into it. I know, yeah. Nothing. So, yeah, I'm going to keep these from now on. Uh, too heavy for giveaways. Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep these. I've got some projects I'm going to do in the garden with these. Uh, Peaky Dippers know about them. And uh, it's going to look good. And eventually when I've got more painted up and screwed up in the garden, I should show you. We found... Oh, I found this, didn't I? Yeah. I found this thing with uh, writing all over it. And um, I couldn't quite make out... Because when you're out on the actual riverside, you can't really make stuff out when it's wet and... Dirty, but I could see that there was writing on it, so that's why I kept it anyway. Got it back home and I got it to a state where I can just about read it. And it says Ransoms, uh, Ransoms, anyway. I forget what the rest of it is. Marie would have put it in the video, but that basically would have been on the front of an old lawnmower. Perfect. Marie, don't look impressed. <laughs> yeah, it's off the front of an old lawnmower, so like that would have been uh, just a bit of decoration on the side. Because in them days, the lawnmowers was all decorative, not like your, your typical orange things you've got now that made out of plastic and yeah. got no character. These lawnmowers was made to last. Um, unfortunately, this one didn't. It went in the river, but there you go. M uh, my personal best find where I think Marie found that day is, it's in a bit of a bad shape, but... 
I'm going to do something with this. Is this thing here, guys? If you remember, she pulled up this square thing. Remember, Maria? Yeah. If you look at the top, it's got all brass. And that there. If you turn it around, you've got that. Because I clean my objects up, you've actually got a drawer which took me two days to get out. <laughs> it's drawed. But that drawer slides into there, guys. That little brass plaque fixes onto the front of there. And the handle I found further down the river. Now I found that as well. You didn't, did you? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure I found that. Maybe two came out then. Probably there's two, I don't know. I have to relate anyway. Um, neither here or there. But, yeah, there you go. So there's the handle. And it is actually the handle to it. Yeah. It'd be lovely if you could get the, uh, like, the dish thing. Um, now, I can either go two ways around this. I can either buy the parts and get it perfect again. Or I can just take the brass thing off, paint it up, put some gold gilding around it uh, with, some, with my paint job. And then we could just use it as a little jewellery box or something. Hmm. was that mustard milk, oh yeah. Hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it was a, it's a beautiful find. And this, I forget the date on it now, but you've got to remember, guys, we have coffee now and we just... Oh, I've got coffee here, look. <laughs> we have coffee now and we just take it for granted. But in them days, to have tea and coffee as a commodity was very rare. It was very rare to have coffee. And you've got to remember... Places like the United States and that, they was going through the pro prohibition where even alcohol was illegal. And if they could get their hands on little bits of alcohol or little bits of coffee or little bits of tea, it was happening in England as well. To have tea in them days was, wow, you know what I mean? Imagine, but you only had small measures. Imagine, it like, you know, in the in the ration books, etc. You know, little, would you get coffee in your ration book? And can you imagine Bab, just... The, Bab, we spoiled yeah, coffee was raw, war, um, red in World War Two with the rations. I'm, I'm on, on about 1900 here, where tea and coffee was only just being um, like uh, transported to the to the British colonies. Because wow. tea comes from India, and to have it transported across here, it was a rich man's delicacy as such, and it was weighed in little bags and stuff like that. It was honestly, if you go and Look at the information on tea and coffee. You'll be shocked. It was like, it was silly. Anyway, mystery <laughs> item. Oh, we need their help, don't we? Now, we I, need your help, folks. On Google Lens, it comes up as a T-Rex tooth. On Google Lens, it comes up as a unicorn horn. On Google Lens, it comes up as a rhinoceros horn. But I keep trying to tell Google on Lens, it's metal. And this had a good two inches of crud around this. And if you see there, that you see how thin the metal is, it only goes thicker here because I've left the crud in here, right? It's hollow, but if, have you seen that pinch there, right? Yeah, it's got like a pinch effect at the bottom, And it's got it? like quite decorative there, look, right? My imagination, guys, you know what I'm like? I was thinking, shall I say it, Maria? You can tell you it, yeah. I was thinking, is it part of a, a sabaton, which is a shoe off a suit of armour? But we think, we think it had been too much deteriorated if it was one of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, possibly. But I might just be having an over-imagination, you know, over-imagination. But that's not any kind of tooth because it's all out. It's not now kind of like machinery tooth because... That would just be a solid triangle of metal. It, it's... The only other thing I can think is, is like a stump went into it and that got screwed in and then it was used as a spike of some kind. Please, guys, if there's anyone yeah. out there... Let's show you again. Please help. If there's <laughs> anybody out there that knows what that is or any ideas are welcome um, and let me know what you think. We've stumped on that one, haven't we? Literally, yeah, <laughs> absolutely stumped. But that's it for the vines. I think that's everything. Um, we do go back to this town next week, which is already recorded. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, we had some amazing oh, vines. Yes. Oh, amazing yes. Amazing vines, guys. Um, so, yeah, look out. Look out for the next video. Brilliant video. 
We're a brilliant company. We're the best company. My little family, the Team Beakies. And I hope this finds footage is okay because it's actually on the phone because uh, we're just having a camera. Please, sorted. guys, if you can bear with us for the next couple of weeks, we've had to order a new camera. Uh, unfortunately, our normal camera that we use that we enjoy the quality of smashed on the floor on the tripod with a great big gust of wind. <coughs> So I've had to put money back into that to get another one. It is on order. It might be, possibly, here before the weekend anyway. But up until then, we will have to use this phone. So if the footage from this and next week's video is now good... Well, it's off for next it's week. only yeah. for that video. Well, we, we did most of it with the camera, but then it halfway through, we had to use your phone next week. Yeah. But... So you might see, on next week's video, you might see a bit of a difference with the quality on the picture halfway through, but it won't be much. No. It won't be much. But other than that, guys, thank you all for joining us tonight. Big love to all the subscribers. We're nearly at the 9,000 now. If you haven't already, get your family to like and subscribe. Share this video as much as you can, guys. All we want to do is this drunk. We don't want drama. We don't want crap. We don't want rubbish. We just want a treasure hunt. We just want a history hunt. And that's all we're about. So big love to all you guys. And I shall see you on the next live.